Hi students, welcome to the Baidu Sindhu News Analysis for 28th of October 2018. So let's get started. So let's look into the first article. So the first article says New Delhi pins its prestige on the Mauritius project. So what is this article all about? So this is in reference to one of the important islands called the Agalega Island, and this is in Mauritius. So the first key important prospective question in your prelims examination is where is this? This Agalega Island. So this Agalega Island is in the country of Mauritius. And also, let's look into some of the map-based questions that can be likely asked in your prelims examination. So this Agalega Island is about thousand odd kilometers from the mainland of Mauritius, and this is important from the prelims perspective. And also, there is an other island called as Assumption Island, and this belongs to Seychelles, and this is also one of the important map. -based questions so your agalega island is below the assumption island so in case they ask you that you should be arranging these islands kindly remember assumption island is in the north and agalega island is in the south so these are very important and agalega is in mauritius and seychelles is where assumption island is present so what we have to understand is this becomes a key important point from your prelims examination but what is that we are discussing right now so this this is in reference to the Agalega Island and in reference to certain concerns that have been voiced in the Parliament of Mauritius, for which we will have to understand a bit of background. So this Agalega have two important subsections, that is, you have the North Island and then you also have the South Island. So what happens in the year 2015 is Prime Minister Narendra Modi he enters in an agreement which India is signing with Mauritius to develop certain infrastructure infrastructural projects. So what are these infrastructural projects? So basically all these infrastructural projects is an improvement of the sea as well as the airport transportation facilities in the Agalega Island. So India goes on to agree to provide about approximately 87 million to build an airport terminal, extended service as well as refurbished jetties. So it means that it is developing the sea as well as the airport infrastructure. On on another note, what India is also doing is it is enhancing the capabilities of the Mauritian Defence Forces in safeguarding their interests in both these islands. But what is the concern right now? So the core concern right now is Prime Minister Praveen Gujanan's government is facing certain questions, and these are the questions that have been voiced by the opposition. So what the opposition says is that this is one of the infrastructural programs and what is India doing is it is providing a certain infrastructural developmental projects but what it is asking the government right now is is it a transparent process why is it questioning this way is because what it suggests is that there are certain reports which also go on to say that there will be presence of Indian naval as well as coast guards so when there is presence of Indian naval as well as coast guards what we are indirectly approaching this is militarization of the zone and when there is militarization of the zone what we will see is the loss of sovereignty in this case so they go on to question the Prime Minister of Mauritius to say them if this is only a developmental project or we are letting go our sovereignty by welcoming another alien government into their home government. Why? Because there is developmental of military base in this locality of Agalega Islands and they further go on to say because of the lack of transparency in awarding these projects to the Indian government what you are also doing is you are making sure that environment is not taken into consideration every project that is being given to another company or an organization or to the any country will have to follow certain environmental norms but in this case what you are also done is all the environmental licenses that were supposed to be given is not taken into picture so there is exemption that you have provided to India so it goes on to ask why is that you have provided exemptions while environmental license is a default thing that is to be given to all organizations as well as country so it further goes on to say that there are certain 
people who are opposing this particular project why because this area of mauritius and indian ocean is already a bedrock for militarization let's try to understand what it goes on to say so you have one of the important islands and that is the reunion island and this is controlled by france so kindly remember this can also be a prospective question in your prelims as well as the mains examination so this reunion island is in indian ocean and it is controlled by france and then you have the chagos archipelago so this is currently under dispute between mauritius as well as the united kingdom so what is the point of concern here so all these important local lobbying groups and local people feel so you have france which is already there in the indian ocean and it has number of its naval bases and you also have the dio garcio which is one of the military bases of united kingdom as well as usa and you have china which is there in djibouti in this particular case so it is already a bedrock of militarization so the minute the license is given to india what could be the possible problem is there is more military militarization and when there is more militarization there could be possible conflict and this possible conflict could be a loss of lives to the people of mauritius so what we also have to understand is now that this particular process and lobbying has been voiced and people are against india coming up to their country what india should also realize is there have been a previous such instances and where projects have also been shelved let's go back to seychelles as we have already discussed there is one of the important islands and that is the assumption island so there were similar other protests in seychelles and this particular project of assumption island which was supposed to be taken by india was also shelved there is also a possible speculation that there was heavy chinese investment in seychelles which allowed seychelles to lean towards china and that is why the project has been shelved another important country that we should be listening is with respect to the maldives so maldives has also opposed india in order to make sure that even it is in the lap of the chinese they have actually stopped the indian military helicopters and it has declined visas to the indians so again maldives is also in the lap of chinese so what we have to consider here is india has to be very sure of what it is doing why this region becomes very important is the fact that about two thirds of the world's oil shipment about one third of the world's bulk cargo and about half of the world container traffic passes through this region so because it is this important india has to make sure that it uplifts its distinct strategic alliance and india will have to step up its appeal it has to negotiate it has to hammer out the differences it has to broker a deal with respect to these islands so that india is able to take the advantage of this strategic importance so this is what we need to understand in reference to this article so moving on let's look into the next article so the next article says sk mishra is ed's interim director so what is important here is that we are speaking about the enforcement director and this is important from your gs paper 2 which becomes a part of statutory regulatory and various quasi judicial bodies so on the prelims front we will have to remember certain facts so let's look into what are these facts so this was established in the year 1956 so it is a law enforcement agency and an economic intelligence agency responsible for enforcing laws and fighting the economic crime in india so it functions under the aegis of department of revenue and ministry of finance so the director of enforcement has its headquarters at new delhi this can also be a prospective question this is headed by the director of enforcement and that is why we have sk mishra who is appointed currently and there are five other regional officers and this is at mumbai chennai chandigarh kolkata and delhi and all these are headed by special directors of enforcement what is also of importance to us is that we also understand functions of the ed so one of the major important function of the ed is to investigate all the money laundering cases so any money laundering that takes place in india the first player to get into action is the enforcement director so all the money laundering cases in and around india and also those which require assistance from other countries will be provided by the enforcement director which is under the prevention of the money laundering act of 2002 
another important point is we have something called as FEMA and FEMA is something to do with the Foreign Exchange Management Act so any of the companies or any of the organizations in case they violate the Foreign Exchange Management Act it is the ED which will again come into picture and it will take care of all the economic offenses and the most important point is in reference to the fugitives so we recently see there are number of people who are leaving India for example Malia and we have Nirav Modi so the objective of this enforcement director is to make sure that all these fugitive economic offenders are not evading the process of law in India by staying outside the country and they are able to face the jurisdiction of India and their major objective is to preserve the sanctity of rule of law in India. So this is all we have to understand in reference to this article. So moving on let's look into the next article. ESMA imposed to end DTC staff strike. So what is important for us is to understand what is this essential services maintenance act so let's try and understand some of the factual data and then look into the analysis perspective so this ESMA is an act of the Parliament of India which was established to ensure delivery of certain services which if obstructed would affect the normal life of the people and from the prelims perspective kindly remember it extends to the whole of India except Jammu and Kashmir because Jammu and Kashmir has its own constitution and it has its own set of law so this is not applicable in the state of Jammu and Kashmir so this includes services like public transport which involves the bus services railway the airport and the health services that is the doctors and the hospitals post and telegraph and related with the defense of the country and then the ESMA is a central law that is a law made by the Parliament of India but the discretion on the execution of it mostly lies with the state government so what this law basically goes on to do is there are certain important services and all these important services let's say for example with respect to the public transport that is what is happening in reference to Delhi here so there are certain important services and without these services people will not be able to live so this will affect the whole rights of the people so what the central government has done is it has come up with one of the acts of the parliament but what is important is this act will be enforced by the state government so it is not the central government the central government has given a framework it has given a law but the execution is the discretionary power of the state government so it is the state government which will go about making sure that this law is enacted and it is implemented this act prohibits the key employees in these services from striking so what do we mean by it so can doctors not strike can public people that is those in the transport services not strike no they would be able to go on a strike but the minute this act is enforced then they'll not be able to go on a strike but by default any person any person who is there providing all these services they would be able to go on a strike but the minute the step state government enforces this act that is when it becomes illegal for all these people to acknowledge this act so what is also important is there are certain penal actions so the minute this act is enforced and then still people don't comply by it what this act goes about doing is it has provided certain penal actions so what are these penal actions so the first penal action is the police would be able to arrest all those people who are doing these strikes immediately without any warrant so the police will not require any warrant as such and they'll be able to arrest immediately why because the enforcement of the act has actually taken place so in case there is any person who commences this strike or otherwise take part in it they will have an imprisonment for about six months or they can have a suitable fine as well but in case there is a person who goes about instigating it then there would be an imprisonment for about one year and then this may extend to fine as well so this is what we need to understand and the most important point is they can be arrested without the warrant so police do not have to show any warrant as such and then they can immediately arrest them and when the ESMA is actually enforced so this is all we have to understand in reference to this article so moving on let's look into the next article 
so the next article says dry spell hits arrival of birds at pulicate so this is important from the prelims perspective so yesterday we did look into chilika lake and now we have the pulicate lagoon and this is the second largest brackish water lagoon in india after the chilika lake so yesterday we have discussed about this and now we are discussing about the second largest brackish water lagoon so the lake encompasses the pulicate lake bird sanctuary and the lagoon is separated from bay of bengal by a barrier island which is in the sri hari kota so this can also be a prospective question kindly remember it is the sri hari kota which is separating this pulicate lake from the bay of bengal and there are two important rivers which it feeds on one is the arani river and the kalangi river all these are important factual data so kindly remember these factual data and in addition to some smaller streams so 90% of the lake falls in andhra pradesh and other 10% under the protected areas of tamil nadu so this lake and you see the borders here right so you have 90% of it coming under the andhra pradesh and rest 10% that is coming under the tamil nadu so it is in the part of andhra pradesh as well as in the borders of tamil nadu so this becomes very important in terms of the map as well as in terms of the prospective question in your prelims examination so kindly remember all these important facts that can pop up in your prelims so moving on let's look into the next article so the next article says a monument of generosity so what is this article all about so what we are discussing in this article is about bara imam bara this is in lucknow so kindly remember it is in uttar pradesh built by asafud daula nawab of awadh in 1784 it is also called as asafi imam bara so what does bara stands for bara stands for big and imam bara is a sacred hall built built for the purpose of azadari so what is azadari here so azadari is some of the rituals that are performed by the sunni as well as the shia muslims so as the title goes there is this monument of generosity so what is the generosity that this article speaks about so what happens is there was one of the massive famine that strikes in the year 1784 so there were people who were suffering because of it they were completely impoverished they did not have their bread and butter they were completely hungry they were poverty stricken so in this case what happens is asafud daula comes up with one of the important generosity missions so what happens happens during this period is there was construction of bara in ambara where all the ordinary people in and around that area and people who were employed in the construction used to build this building after the building was constructed in the morning what you also had were certain noblemen who used to come down and make sure they break down everything that was constructed why was this being done so that it would take more amount of time for the construction so that all these people were employed simultaneously so this is important from the prelims examination perspective and kindly remember these two important factual data so moving on let's look into the next article so the next article that we are speaking about about is in reference to the monkey pox so this is also important from the examination perspective so kindly remember this becomes an important point from the gs paper 2 that is in the health so the world health organization says monkey pox is a rare viral zoonotic disease so this is one of the important facts that we need to remember and this occurs in the remote parts of central and west africa near tropical rainforest so it is similar to the human smallpox a disease that was eradicated in 1980 although monkey pox is much milder than smallpox it can be fatal so the virus is mostly transmitted to people from wild animals such as rodents as well as primates so how is it transmitted so when we look into how this transmission takes place whenever any individual or a man comes in direct contact with the blood of the rodents or with the primates so it is that moment where they have this bodily contact or the bodily fluids that are touched by the human being that is when the person gets infected by it and apart from this in case he go on to eat inadequately cooked meat of those infected animals then again the transmission can take place but this has been limited secondary spread through the human to human transmission so the fatality has been recorded at occurring in younger age groups and when was the first one it was detected so the human monkey pox was first identified in humans in the 1970 in the democ 
Democratic Republic of Congo so what we have to understand in this case is what would be the symptoms so this symptoms can be categorized into two important phases so what are the phases one is the invasion phase and this is for a period of initial zero to five days and after this what we also have is the skin eruption phase so what is the invasion phase here so this would be characterized by fever intense headache then you will have certain back pains and then you will have the intense asthenia so all this would be on the initial first five days so once you have the invasion phase immediately following the invasion phase is the skin eruption so what happens during this phase is after the invasion phase the skin starts rupturing and then you will see the rash that is appearing on the face as well as on the other part Parts of the body so the main important points or the symptoms is you will have two phases that is the invasion as well as the skin eruption and with respect to the treatment what we will have to understand is that there is no specific treatment or vaccines available for monkeypox infection but all those that were employed in the smallpox can be used for the same and it is about 85 percent effective so you don't require separate vaccines as such but those vaccines that were used for the smallpox can also be used for the monkeypox so this is all we have to understand in reference to this article so moving on let's look into the practice questions so which of the following diseases can be transmitted from one person to another through tattooing why are we discussing this this is because we have just discussed one of the health ones that is why we have taken up this question so it says chikungunya hepatitis b and hiv AIDS. so select the correct answer using the coach given below so it is only two and three and not chicken gunya is a wrong one so moving on let's look into the next question so the kalamkari painting refers to a hand painted cotton textile in South India why have we taken this there is also one more article in the newspaper and that is in reference to the Tanjavur painting so let's also understand one of the important questions from the mains based one and that is to understand the Tanjavur painting so explain the intricacies of the Tanjavur painting and also discuss the key difference between Tanjavur and Mysore paintings so UPSC has previously asked such questions that is why we have taken this question so let us understand and what are the important features of it it is a style of art practiced in South India inaugurated from the town of Tanjavur and there are gold leaves semi precious stones and mirrors that are used in its grand look all the paintings are done with traditionally made gold foil so what is the importance of gold in these paintings one it makes sure that the glitter makes the painting more attractive as well as it also prolongs the life of the artifact so in order to give that glitter effect and in order to make sure that there is longer life that is why gold is also used in these paintings colors used for painting are also fungus resistant and the painting lasts for generation because it is mostly the fungus resistant cream that is used in the painting and then what we also have to discuss is the zona and this it is broadly based on two essential themes so the first being the scenes from the epics and the Puranas as depicted on the walls and pillars of the temples and secondly images of deities considered in the temples particularly of popular ones such as the Sri Rangam and Tirumala portraits of kings who were the patrons of these artists as well as the priests and ordinary individuals also find a place in these paintings so these are the features with respect to the Tanjavur painting but what is the difference between Tanjavur and Mysore style of painting so in Tanjavur the Giso work is comparatively thicker in comparison to the Mysore painting then you also have a wooden cardboard to increase the thickness of the Giso layer that gives it a three dimensional feel in Tanjavur painting the gold foil used this thick while in Mysore painting the foil is delicate in nature the Tanjavur paintings have also got the GI indication so these are some of the things that you should be able to write in case such questions are asked so this is what we need to understand for today so also look into the Baiju CNA questions pick up those questions write all your answers or the comment section so that we can evaluate and give you the relevant feedback for the same so this is it for today thank you so much all the best